Hello guys, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So today is Valentine's Day. So I go, I'm going to wish you the very happy Valentine's Day. And we are going to begin today's class with a very beautiful quote that is, talk with people who make you see the world differently. And this is not only related to the romantic relationships, but if you want to gain exposure, then you should expand your horizon and talk to other people who are of other backgrounds so that your entire horizon and exposure can be increased. And this is for the people who are single, jinke baas koi nahi hai aur jin jo bajrang dal ke supporters hai ya jin, jin ka bhi koi mate nahi hai, unke liye ye hai that you carry so much love in your heart, give some to yourself. Because abhi aapke paas aapi hai, love dene ke liye, to try to love yourself and it will be a really, really big boon for all of you if you love yourself and then enter into a relationship to love someone else. Because when you have attained that level of knowing yourself, of loving yourself, then only you can give that space to the other person so that you can give your 100% in that relationship. So try to start loving yourself and it's a very small and very easy way to increase your self-love. And that is do what you like to do the most. And one more thing, self-love is not wasting your time. Self-love is not uh, doing or watching the reels throughout the day and you would call that self-love. No, because then you are abusing your body, you are abusing your time, you are abusing the resources which have been given to you. So that abuse cannot be self-love. Identify what is self-love for you and then learn and do activities which, like, uh, which you like to do. Okay? So that was the motivation quote. Let's begin today's class. Uh, guys, uh, I hope all of you are aware that this is our number, WhatsApp number. You can uh, give us the feedback on this number. This is our main website. This is our mail ID. And we have one more website, which is discussion.anujindal.in. And uh, what is this website? aim to do. So the basic idea of this is to give a platform to the students so that they can put their queries here and we resolve them. On a daily basis, we resolve the queries on this platform. So use this platform if you have any kind of academic query or any other query related to your course or your career. Now coming to the questions. So the first question is from which country is India planning to bring 12 cheetahs in India? Okay. So here, South Africa, guys, is the right answer. If you are following the current affairs, then you would have definitely known the answer of this question because this uh, conversation or this collaboration of bringing cheetahs from South Africa is not very new. It was going on since January last year. And in January last year, only South Africa and India signed the agreement uh, to bring the cheetahs in it. Now, last year only in September, if you remember, Seva Divas, the birthday of our Prime Minister, on this day, we had the eight cheetahs introduced in India. So, do you guys know from which country did we bring the cheetahs? The country was Namibia. So, uh, from Namibia, these eight cheetahs were brought and now we are talking of introducing 12 more cheetahs. Okay, there is a little bit controversy around this news particularly. I will talk about that as well. But uh, this information is important. And also remember that this introduction as well as this introduction are both a part of the project cheetah. Okay, in project cheetah, we aim to bring the cheetahs in India, which became extinct in the year 1952. Okay. So in India, we used to have Asiatic cheetahs and from Namibia, we have brought the Asiatic cheetahs again. But the cheetahs which we are going to bring from South Africa are exotic cheetahs. Okay? And that is the controversy particularly. Okay, Because if we introduce the exotic cheetahs in our nation, first of all, then it would be very difficult for the, these cheetahs to adjust in our climate. And secondly, it would be a danger for the existing uh, species of cheetahs 
in India. Okay, the local species would get less attention when we have the exotic uh, species, and that is the reason uh, the entire controversy is going around with the introduction of these twelve cheetahs. Right now, the cheetahs have not been brought in India. It is just that they have confirmed that the cheetahs will be brought in. Now, I have taught you about the project cheetah. We have project tiger and project elephant as well. And I hope all of you must have known about these two projects. So, project tiger and elephant, both of them aim to uh, conserve these animals. So, when was project cheetah, uh, tiger launched and when was project elephant launched? These two are your questions which you are going to tell me in the comment section below. Okay, so I have taught you everything. One thing that is of importance is that it is the same national park wherein the 12 cheetahs will be introduced again. Okay, that is Kuno National Park in Madhya Pradesh. And one more thing that um, action plan for the introduction of cheetah in India is the formal or official name of the project cheetah. The next question is, which state has launched the wetland XC2 conservation establishment plan in collaboration with France? So here guys, Rajasthan is the right answer. Okay, so let's know about this news. This news basically aimed to create this uh, kind of a zoo. Okay, it will be a zoo. So wetland XC2 conservation establishment. So this kind of a zoo will be established inside the Cleonado uh, National Park. Cleonado National Park in Rajasthan. So within this park, this wetland conservation center will be located, which is going to be a zoo basically. So here what will happen? Exotic animals and the animals which are particularly found in the wetland ecosystem, those will be displayed. Okay, those will be conserved and they will be put there on display as well. Okay, just like a zoo concept. Hota hai. So similarly, uh, this will be developed. Now the point here is that France is going to help Rajasthan in setting up this plant. Okay, so do remember that 1200 crores will be the cost of this. Uh, project and this cost will be funded by France. Now, guys, chaliye, sabse pehle is Cleonado National Park se hi start karte hai. So, Cleonado National Park and Loktak Lake. These are the only two locations from India which are mentioned in the Montreal Accord. Montreal's Accord of the Ramsar Convention. That is the Convention on the Conservation of Wetlands. ठीक है तो ये बहुत important fact है please इसको remember रखेगा क्योंकि this can be asked in the examination precisely because this part is now in the news again now the second thing uh, related to the state is that Rajasthan has recently announced its inflation relief package as well now in the uh, inflation relief package Basically, food grains will be given to the people uh, under the NFSA and the LPG subsidy will be given to the people. So, such kind of packages will be offered to the people who are poor so that they can be given a relief in the situation of this hyperinflation. Not hyperinflation, fortunately we are not in the condition of hyperinflation as of now. But yes, inflationary pressures are really high in India and we need to cater it, okay? Now on that note, can anyone of you tell me the difference between hyperinflation, inflation, deflation and stagflation? So this is my question and this is going to test the conceptual knowledge of yours. So if you don't know about it, then do search it and try to frame the answer in the comment section. And if you already know about it, then provide the information that you have in the comment section. Okay, so that I also get to know how much prepared are you when the exam is approaching near. Question number three is, which edition of the Indian Rice Congress was conducted at the National Rice Research Institute at Kattak Odisha? So here guys, second edition of this Congress was organized. Okay, Indian Rice Congress. And the basic idea is to uh, uh, 
is to collaborate and discuss on the ideas for the increase in the production of rice. That's the basic idea. And the National Rice Research Institute in Kattak has organized this Rice Congress. And the theme of the Congress was transforming the rice research. And the organizers were the Association of Rice Researcher Workers, which is a part of the National, Insti National Rice Research Institute. Okay? So basically, the National Rice Re Research Institute has conducted or organized this Indian Rice Congress and the particular organization which was given the responsibility of this particular Congress was this Association of Rice Research Workers. Now apart from this, it's a very interesting fact and a, I would say an auxiliary fact that Kattak is also called as the Silver City and also a Millennium City. These facts can directly be asked from you in the examination. So you need to prepare this fact as well for your RBI grade B phase one particularly. Okay? India has signed an MOU with TASH to export the ALH MK3 helicopters to the country. The agreement was signed in January 2022. So here guys, what is the right answer? The right answer is Mauritius. Okay, so with Mauritius, this collaboration was going on since January 2022. And uh, we are going to export the ALH MK3 helicopters to this African country. Now, do remember this thing that these advanced light helicopters are manufactured entirely by the Hindustan Aeronautic Limited. Limited. Now here guys, this is Mauritius, I hope you can clearly see it, which is near Madagascar, okay. So if you see here, this pointed here near Madagascar, this Mauritius is located. Uh, this is Madagascar, okay. This is Madagascar and this is Mauritius. Now what is the capital and currency of this country? This is your task which you are going to tell me in the comment section below. Thoda homework aap karoge, to aapke liye bhi benefit ho. The next question is which country hosts the World Government Summit on an annual basis? So here, UAE, guys, is the right answer. So World Government Summit is hosted by UAE on an annual basis and it was hosted in Dubai this year. The theme of this summit was summit is shaping future governments. So this was the theme and the first edition of this summit took place in 2013. World Government Summit Organization organizes the World Government Summit. Apart from this, there is nothing much in this news itself. Although I would say that the background facts are more important. So, here guys is the UAE. Okay, so UAE has seven states or Emirates. Okay, these Emirates are basically the states which we have in India as well. So, seven states are there. First is Abu Dhabi which is the capital, then Dubai, Ajman, Omal Kwan, uh, Fujariha, and Ras Al Khamiya. Okay, Khaima. Uh, I don't know whether I'm pronouncing it right or not, but this location, this particular emirate is very important. Why? Because here we have a special economic zone and this special economic zone is very important for the Indian businesses as well. A lot of businesses are already established in this zone and a lot of, uh, and a lot of businesses are planning to set up in this special economic zone of the UAE. Okay? So I hope this much is clear. Now the next important thing is the neighboring countries of UAE because that can also be asked. I don't know whether uh, this question was there in 2019 or 2020 to 2021, but the question was that uh, Seychelles is located in which ocean? So that was the question. I guess Vevel Ramakalan who was appointed as the president of Seychelles and he is of Indian origin and that is why that question came up in your exam. So guys, from here, take the lesson that you need to prepare the other facts also. So, which countries surround the borders of UAE? First is Saudi Arabia, then we have Oman. Okay, so land borders are shared by uh, Saudi Arabia and Oman only, and maritime borders are also shared with Iran. Okay, uh, and neighbors are 
here this is Qatar and a very small island of Bahrain is also there. Okay? Now, Saudi Arabia, Oman, UAE, Qatar, Bahrain and Kuwait. These six countries are part of the Gulf Cooperation Council which is basically the collaboration of these six countries with uh, exports the oil uh, very much in the world. Okay, So that is the uh, important thing that you should be knowing. And this is guys a very important strait where recently the UAE and Iran conducted a military drill. Now my question from all of you is you need to tell me the name of this strait. And this is a very recent news I had taught you about this strait particularly. This is important because almost more than half of the world's natural gas and oil goes from this route. That is why this strait is very strategic and important. Now it is your duty to tell me that uh, what is the name of this strait. The next question is asked for the revised estimates of the direction of text collections in 2022 to 23 released by the Central Board of Direct Taxes the direct tax collection has increased by dash percent in 2022 to 2023. In FY23, the total direct taxes collected were rupees 15.67 lakh crore. So, what is the percentage of growth? The percentage of growth is 24%. Again, a very simple news. A data has been released by the CBDT and according to that data, the direct tax collection has increased in India and the percentage of growth is 24%. The total collection stands at 15.67 lakh crore, but do remember the year has not been completed yet. The year has to be completed by March 2023, so this amount can fluctuate. Okay? And right now you don't have any exam coming up, so don't mug up this amount, just keep it in your mind that there was a data which was released by CBDT about the collection of direct taxes in India. Now what is the reason of hike in the direct taxes? The reason is high corporate and personal income tax payments. Last year, the tax collection stood at around 14 lakh crore. And now it has been increased to 15.67 lakh crore. So this high increment is due to the high corporate and personal taxes. Who is the governor of Lada? So here guys, I hope you have heard about the recent reshuffling and the appointment of new governors in different states. So this question is taken from that news only. Now who is the new governor of Ladakh now? It is B.D. Mishra. Now, it must be in your mind whether you should remember all the governors and their states. So, my answer is yes. Guys, in the exam, the questions from the governors have also been asked. So, don't skip this news. Okay? It can cost you one mark in your examination. Not even one mark. You have negative marking as well. If you leave the question, then only one mark. If you mark it wrongly, then it would be 1.25 marks. Okay? So, let's have a look at the governors. Abdul Nazir, Andhra Pradesh, Kavalya, Arunachal Pradesh, Lakshman, Sikkim, CP Radhakrishnan, Jharkhand, Shiv Pratap Shukla, Himachal Pradesh. Okay, so these are the governors and there are more governors. These are some other governments who have, governors who have been appointed by the President Draupadi Murmu. Okay, and you have to remember all of these governors and their respective states. When is the safer internet day observed? So, February 7, guys, is the right answer. And the theme is want to talk about it, making space for cons conversations about the life online. This is the one theme. Then there are certain websites which are showing that together for a better internet is the theme of the safer internet day 2023. But guys, Pay attention to this fact that whenever you get this kind of a confusion of two themes, you need to prepare both the themes because you never know in the options which would be the right theme. Let me tell you why the confusion is here. This theme was mentioned on the UK website, okay? 
and this theme was mentioned on the website called safer internet day so the website's name itself was a safer internet day and from there this theme this thing was mentioned there and from there I have picked up this and mentioned it here. So you need to be aware about both the themes if you want to mark the answer correct. In case you are given both these as the option in the question, then in my opinion, the most appropriate answer would be marked. You can mark this, you can mark this because then it would be a fallacy in the question itself. Okay, until or unless the question specifies that according to the UK website or a uh, uh, UK website or other websites, what is the theme of the Safer Internet Day? Until or unless that happens, then uh, both of these answers are the correct answer. But in case the question specifies, then you have to mention one of these themes. The next question is, what is the theme of RBS Financial Literacy Week 2023? So here guys, the answer is good financial behavior, your savior. First of all, the dates are February 13 to 17 and uh, good financial behavior your savior is a theme. Now this RBI Kehata is the marketing campaign of RBI not the marketing but consumer awareness campaign sorry. So this campaign aims to create the awareness among the consumers about financial thoughts. One more thing that this RBI Kehata is a marketing campaign sorry it's not a marketing campaign it's a consumer awareness campaign. This campaign is available in 14 languages. Amitabh Bachchan, the big B, is the brand ambassador of this RBI. Kehta hai. Okay? So that is all. Now this financial literacy week and this RBI, kehta hai. these two things are different, but they work on the same line. Financial literacy week means that the RBI wants the entire nation to become financially literate and if we are becoming more and more financially literate it is very the much the responsibility of us that we also become the uh, become cautious citizens okay so these two are the initiatives on the same lines so do remember these two initiatives the last question of the day is <coughs> which country has been hit by the cyclone gabriel so new zealand guys is the right answer the capital and currency of New Zealand is your task. Okay. Now in this slide, I have mentioned that how are the cyclones named? You must have seen that this country has named the cyclone in India. This country has named the cyclone which has hit the West Bengal. So why are these countries giving the names to the cyclones which are coming on our land or vice versa? For example, if India gives the name to the New Zealand's uh, cyclone, then why is India giving that name? Who has given that responsibility to India to give the name? So here is the answer. So basically what happens is that there are different regional bodies, five regional bodies are there for each continent. Okay. And these regional bodies are created under the World Meteorological Organization. And these organizations, these regional bodies basically have all the countries from the region. For example, the Asia's regional body has the countries from Asia. And those countries have given a list of names. Okay? And from that list of names, every time whenever a cyclone comes, every time the name is given in an alphabetical order. So this is how the cyclones are named. So it bhati choti si general information the aap logo ke liye. Agar yaad nahi rakhne, to yaad rakhne ki zarurat bhi nahi hai because it is not necessary. Nobody is going to ask you this fact in your exam okay so it is just for your general awareness so aap isko pad bhi sakte otherwise i have just explained you what is written here so guys the video ends i hope you have enjoyed the content in case you have any feedback you can provide it in the comment section or on our whatsapp chat whatsapp number thank you so much guys for watching the video happy valentine's day or ab enjoy karo valentine's day